Hello and welcome to our video from Double Rail. In this video, I'm going to show you how to open the tender on a uh, GT3 from uh, KR Models. And I'm also going to show you some uh, repairs that we did uh, to the tender uh, to fix a couple of minor issues um, that we, I think, were caused uh, in transit. Uh, the other thing that we're going to do in this video is uh, give you guys uh, some video clips of the GT3 running on the layout without any music. Um, I previously uh, did a video, which I'll link up here, that had some uh, really nice music in the background, but a couple of people noted that they really wanted to hear the loco running. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go and um, upload some new footage as well as put some of that older footage um, up in this video without the music and uh, so that you guys can uh, check out the logo running. Okay, so this video is actually going to be in two parts. Um, I'm actually filming this part that you're listening to now um, about a week after I filmed the initial repair video. But one thing to keep in mind is uh, Kira Models would prefer that you uh, reach out to them before you try to do any repairs. If you do any repairs without reaching out to them, it'll basically um, void your warranty. So, in this video, what we're going to do first is uh, open the tender. And opening the tender is actually quite easy. Um, there's four clips. There's one here, one here, uh, one here, and one here. And to open it up, you just simply uh, push and twist, and it comes right off. Now, one thing to keep in mind is there is a weight block and um, a plastic piece inside the tender here. So what you want to do is kind of angle it forward, and this is the rear of the tender that you hook um, with the NEM coupling. And you basically want to just angle it away. And you can see there, uh, the reason for that is there's this piece here for the lights. Or I think it's for the lights. Yes, for the lights. There's a piece here for the lights. And then there's this piece here. And you just want to pull that away so that you don't break anything. And that's um, basically it. Now, my tender was actually rattling. And the reason it was rattling was this um, piece of glazing here um, had popped out. And uh, it was loose inside um, the tender body. And so all I did was I just uh, lined it back up and pushed it into place and that fixed that problem. There's also a screw that had fallen out from the bottom. I believe it came out of one of these uh, two slots here. If you look at the board and look at the uh, diagram, there's actually screws here, here, here and here on either side of the speaker and um, four that hold uh, this in place. However, um, my two are missing. One of them had fallen out. I'm not sure where the other one is. It's not inside the tender. I checked that out. Um, the other problem that I had was, as you can see here, um, it's not as bad, but the loco was basically stopping in certain parts of the layout where the track was slightly not level. And uh, the reason for that is if you look on this side, and um, there's a copper plate uh, down inside there and uh, that basically provides the contacts. And on this one side, it's not budging at all. It kind of goes through uh, these two slots uh, or three slots. And uh, this one's for the red wire. There's three slots. So there's copper slot, copper slot, and then there's uh, the one with the wire attached to it. And this other one here is on the black wire side. And what was happening was this was basically falling all the way through. And so it'll just, you know, you could see the whole thing. And what I'm going to do is I actually have original footage uh, before I did the repair. And I'll put that next in the video. In fact, I'll put it in right now. Three. Now this uh, arrived um, over the weekend and it ran great. Uh, except I had a couple of problems. <laughs> one, um, I had this um, screw fall out of the bottom of it. And I wasn't quite sure. Uh, if there were more loose screws in the uh, loco itself or if there were any other issues. And um, the other thing that I had is every so often um, the loco would just stop dead randomly on different parts of the layout. Um, now what was interesting was it stopped on two specific parts of the layout more often where the track kind of undulated a little bit. So I was kind of trying to figure out um, exactly what was going on there. So I'm going to show you the two problems and how to fix them. Now the first thing I wanted to say was I did message uh, KRO models before I touched this thing and uh, I explained to them the problem uh, with the screw and they said just go ahead and, and pop um, the body shell off the, um, the top of the chassis just unclips. It's uh, quite easy. There's um, just two uh, clips on either side and just pops right off and to go put the screw back in. Now I looked at their uh, diagram sheet and um, it looks like the two screws are missing from one here and one from here. And uh, what's interesting is the screw seems to be the wrong type um, for these holes, although it looks like on one of them someone tried to screw it in. Um, so I'm guessing what happened was maybe when they were manufacturing it in China, they um, had put the wrong screws in there and um, 
had just like not properly tightened it down and that's why they popped off and I looked inside there the diagram is pretty good about telling you where all the different screws are and the rest of them are all in there um, so since this isn't moving around and this seems to be installed on opposite ends um, I'm just gonna leave it out and not worry about it and um, however I was able to find out the other problem so what I'm gonna do is I've got this uh, new magnifying glass thing so I'm gonna move it down here and hopefully uh, reposition the camera a little bit for you um be able to see what's going on so um if you see here there's uh some metal tabs there's a copper tab there and a copper tab there and they um control the um this kind of uh, contact plate that's uh, on the um tender there now if i flip it over you can see there's one on the other side um but the difference is that it's kind of hanging down so if i if you see there, um, there's the copper, uh, you can see the inside of the copper plate there and there. Now it's on the track, it's not so bad, but when it occasionally it'll hit a point in the track where it raises up and um, it starts making contact properly. And this is what's causing the train to um, to stop. So I think the fix for it, um, if you see here, it's kind of kept in with this old tab. And um, what I'm going to do is just kind of, it needs to be bent slightly inwards, just like the other one is. And I think that will um, hold it in place. Um, but I'm going to check with the KR model guys first and make sure that's uh, an acceptable fix. And then um, what I'll do is I'll just use a pair of needle nose, oops, use a pair of needle nose pliers uh, to fix that and get the thing running. Um, so I'm going to go, I just give them a quick message and uh, find out. And if that's fine, uh, I'll show you the fix here on the video. And then you can see it running around the layout some more. Uh, but it's a fantastic model. Um, had a little few teething problems, but nothing crazy, and uh, it's uh, much better than some other manufacturers' first attempts. So that's all right. So you should have seen the original uh, kind of repair footage that I did, um, and basically care models. Um, I told them that I'd done this, so it is uh, pretty straightforward, and uh, it does still move around a little bit, but it's sufficient that it's not uh, losing contact or anything like that. I could probably do a better job of it, but uh, it doesn't matter. It's kind of like where it was, where I decided to bend it on the. Um, on the copper uh, tab there. Now reassembling it is also um, pretty simple. Uh, in fact, just so you know, I don't have the uh, I have the DCC ready version, but it looks like it has the speaker and everything in there. So all you'd have to do is replace the chip to get the uh, sound version. And um, something I might actually ask him if he can do. I'm not sure if he can do that or not. Uh, to re reattach it, you can see there uh, there are some uh, tabs. What you want to do is just put it over on one side. And then when you flick it over, just very gently, and push against the tender chassis, and it should hopefully clip over. Yeah, like so. And that's it. So there you have it. And uh, that's how to uh, take the tender uh, apart. And uh, hopefully that was reasonably on camera. And uh, what we're going to do next is uh, show you running back and forth on the layout. Uh, so hopefully you guys enjoyed that.
All right, so there you have it. Uh, that's it for today's video. Hope you guys uh, found it useful. Uh, please feel free uh, to leave uh, feedback and comments in the uh, comments below so we can make the videos uh, better and more to your liking. All right, so uh, next up, I'm working on a couple of 3D printing projects. I also have a O-Gage, N-Gage, as well as the standard <laughs> Tupler Rail uh, videos that are in the works. So it's a couple of, a couple of cool projects. Oh, I also have an interesting new double O um, layout in the works as well. So you'll see a couple of layout updates over the next couple of weeks, as well as uh, some 3D printing videos mixed in as well. So hopefully you guys will uh, find those useful. And uh, if you're looking for my other GT3 video, um, I'll put a link uh, up here. I also have a, a quick reference video showing you how to um, disconnect and reconnect uh, the tender and it'll come after this video um, in the next couple hours. All right, so that's it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it and until next time.